Hello and welcome back to World 360. What can we expect from US President Joe Biden and Chinese President Xi Jinping's upcoming meeting? Who is David Cameron, the former Prime Minister of the UK, who has made a surprise cabinet comeback? We answer this and more in today's episode. So first up, Biden and Xi's upcoming meeting. So the US and Chinese presidents are scheduled to meet today on the sidelines of the Asia Pacific Economic Cooperation Summit or simply the APEC summit which will take place in San Francisco. Now APEC is a group of 21 economies involved in trade and investment cooperation in the Asia Pacific region. It consists of 21 members such as the US, South Korea, Thailand, China and more. India is not a member but all of its quad partners US, Japan and Australia are a part of it. So, why is this meeting between the American and Chinese presidents important? Firstly, it comes after a slew of visits by American officials to China over the last few months. US Secretary of State Antony Blinken and Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen both made trips which were seen as attempts to keep dialogue open between two rival world powers. The last time Biden and Xi met was in November 2022 in Bali in Indonesia on the sidelines of the G20 summit. This time around, Chinese President Xi Jinping will be visiting America after 6 years. Currently, his country and the US are rivals in almost every aspect whether it's geopolitics, trade, tech or competing for influence in different regions of the world. Biden and Xi are expected to discuss regional and global issues when they meet and they're also expected to speak on the importance of maintaining open lines of communication and managing competition with one another. The Israel-Hamas conflict is very likely to feature in their talks especially after China helped regional foes Iran and Saudi Arabia agree to normalize ties earlier this year. Right now the US is trying to contain the fallout of the war in Gaza and ensure Iran nor its proxies take any steps in expanding the conflict into a regional one. The question of Iran's nuclear program and the threat it poses will also be a likely topic of conversation between Biden and Xi. So there are low expectations for a major deliverable or a breakthrough following Biden and Xi's conversation but there may be talks on the possible re-establishment of military communication which was broken off after US politician Nancy Pelosi visited Taiwan last year Resuming talks between military leaders of the two nations as Biden's national security advisor says is a big priority for Washington in order to avoid miscalculations and misunderstandings in the future Military communication between the US and China has been sparse since the pandemic began but relations grew even frostier after the US shot down a suspected Chinese spy balloon in February this year. For our second topic we're looking at a former British prime minister who has made a surprise cabinet comeback. David Cameron, widely blamed for Brexit, is now the UK's new foreign secretary in what is being viewed as a major cabinet reshuffle ahead of the UK elections next year. David Cameron will now replace James Cleverley as foreign secretary and Cleverley has taken over the post of home secretary once occupied by Suela Braverman. Braverman like UK PM Rishi Sunak is also of Indian descent and she is arguably or was arguably among the most senior and divisive ministers in Rishi Sunak's cabinet. She was widely controversial for her remarks about immigration but more recently for her comments about the policing of pro-Palestinian protests in the UK. Incidentally, this cabinet reshuffle happened while Indian Foreign Minister Dr. S. Jay Shankar was visiting the UK where he met with the new foreign and home secretaries. So, who is David Cameron? Cameron served as UK PM from 2010 to 2016. In July 2016, he resigned after the outcome of the Brexit vote when Britain voted to leave the European Union. It was his call to hold the nationwide referendum on whether the UK should remain a part of the European Union. His aim was to end a decades-long argument within his own party, the Conservative Party, on this issue. But the plan backfired and Britain eventually voted for Brexit. Many wonder why Cameron gambled on the issue by deciding to hold a referendum. But let's look at what happened in 2014. That year, Cameron agreed to hold a referendum on Scottish independence, which was largely successful because a majority of Scots voted to remain a part of the UK. Many analysts say Cameron was seeking to repeat that success with Brexit. It was also well known that Cameron was opposed to Brexit but agreed to the referendum nonetheless. In fact in a 2019 media interview he said it was his greatest regret to have lost the referendum. 
Cameron was a former public relations executive for a commercial television company before entering politics. He became the UK's youngest leader in almost two centuries after the 2010 election. And it was his administration that also legalized same-sex marriage in the UK in 2013. In 2021, years after the Brexit debacle, reports claim that Cameron was actively lobbying for the now-failed supply chain finance firm Greensill Capital. The incident raised questions about the extent to which former leaders can use their status to influence government policy. For our last topic, we're looking at what's happening along the Myanmar-India border. As you know, in February 2021, the Myanmar junta or the military orchestrated a coup and overthrew the civil government. The junta is now facing its biggest test since taking power. On Monday, resistance forces seized power near the Chin state, which is located close to the Indian border town of Rekhorda. Now, these resistance forces consist of ethnic minority forces who had launched a coordinated offensive capturing some towns and military outposts. Reports say seven junta soldiers, including a major from the Ray base, surrendered and that 30 soldiers from another base fled to the Indian state of Mizoram. Reports say about 5,000 people from Myanmar crossed into India's Mizoram state to seek shelter from the fighting. Now, just four days ago, Myanmar's president, who was installed by the military, said the country was at risk of breaking apart because of an ineffective response to the rebellion, which we're now seeing. Earlier, the ethnic alliance and allied anti-regime resistance forces had seized control of Kunlong, a strategically located town in northern Shan state. Kunlong is a major hub on a Myanmar-China trade route. So the resistant forces were able to occupy all the junta bases, including the hilltop outpost, housing their tactical command in this town. Since late October, the Alliance and Allied Anti-Regime Resistance Forces, who like to call themselves the Brotherhood Alliance, have seized over 130 outposts, including many near the Chinese and Indian borders. Thank you so much for watching. This is Pia Kushankuti for The Print.